when Dr. Whitman arrived here, he started building a house. And in December 1836, he brought his bride, Narcissa, here to this house. She was overjoyed to see this house, and it reminded her of the beginnings of her mother and father. Two years later, they moved from this site to higher ground because of flooding problems. Also here, you can see the orchard. Well, they have tried to bring back an orchard. I don't know that this is the original one. But they started with 15 trees. And at the end of, I think, five years, they had 75 trees. The Whitman's only child, Alice Clarissa, was born during the mission's first year. She was a delight to her parents and a curiosity to the natives who were amazed at her size and vitality. The depression in the ground here marks where the Walla Walla River originally was and is also the site of the drowning of Alice Clarissa. This is the second house that was built by Marcus Whitman, and it stood right on this location. It served as a school, hospital, orphanage, church, and all of that changed in one tragic day, November 29th, 1847. What occurred was there was a measles outbreak. And as often happens, the natives took the brunt of the disease, losing just about every child, which was their future. There was some outside influences regarding this measles outbreak, and it was told to the Cayuse Indians that it actually was poisoning, since most of the white people survived it. So believing that and seeing that their culture and their future were disappearing, the Cayuse attacked the Whitman mission and killed Marcus and Narcissus Whitman and 11 other immigrants that were here. Could things have ended differently? Who knows? But it's something we all need to think about for our future. Over in this area, Whitman cultivated 40 acres. The crops and livestock that he raised were to feed his family 
and his mission family. Hungry travelers found food for the winter and their payments offset the mission expenses. For the natives, the farming methods Whitman introduced were training for survival. Whitman knew that root gathering and hunting would not sustain the Cayuse after the white man settled their lands. This is a restored section of the old Oregon Trail that came by the Whitman Mission. And also, at the top of the hill is the grave of the Whitmans. Am I going to climb up that one? I don't know. Let's wait and see. This is the original Oregon Trail. It has been restored. This is just outside Walla Walla, Washington at the Whitman Mission. And we are approaching a covered wagon. I'm sorry for the bouncing. It's very uneven. And as probably mentioned before, up on the hill is where the Whitmans are buried, which we are going to see very shortly. You're asking why is the wagon so small? This is a Oregon Trail wagon from the 1840s. If the wagons had been any bigger, they would have had too much difficulty crossing over the mountains. Therefore, the smaller ones could do it a lot easier. Notice that the wagon has steel rims or tires, as I guess you would call them. And they did have brakes. And I guess it wouldn't be too hard to do a brake job. You just go find a piece of wood cut it to that shape and away you go again. Jacking this baby up would be a little difficult, but I'm sure they succeeded. So this would fit many people. Most of the time they walked. They were just tired of sitting, I guess. And they even have their own little toolbox. Whoops. They have their own little toolbox where they would keep whatever.
but we'll continue on and head up to the grave site walking along the Oregon Trail. After a long, hard climb, we are finally at the Whitman gravesite. Today has been a beautiful day with these white fluffy clouds. Temperatures in the lower 80s. Finally, we are getting warm. And down below, is the Whitman Farm and I'm hoping I'm shading it enough that you can see it. And this is what the Whitman mission would have looked like in 1847. The pond is still there. It shows the Walla Walla River being there, but it has since dried up. And if you can see it goes straight across now rather than this loop. It's quite a beautiful sight from up here. The farmlands, the mountains in the background, blue sky, fluffy clouds, and nothing but quietness. So we'll our, we're on our way back down now. See you at the bottom. We are at the Great Grave. As the sign says, Time has dimmed the inscription on the coverstone of the great grave. Reproduced here is a copy of the inscription from the original registry. So buried here is Marcus Whitman, Narcissa Prentice Whitman, Andrew Rogers, James Young, Lucian Saunders, Nathan Kimball, Crockett A. Bewley, Isaac Gillen, John Sager, Francis Sager, Jacob Hoffman, Amos Sales, Jacob D. Hall. They were massacred near this spot by Cayuse Indians, November 29th through the 30th, 1847. Some of the names can be seen, just barely. 
Marcus and his wife are at the top of the list. So we'll walk around here. And I'm going to turn the camera upside down so that perhaps it will show just right. So now you are looking at the names. And I'm hoping they come out right on the screen. And the top of it says, Sacred to the Memory of. And it's of all these people. This little monument is to honor one of those patriots who on May 2, 1843, founded the provincial government at, looks like, Champaig, Oregon. Can you see the blueberries? This bush is just loaded with blueberries. Looks like some people, or shall I say animals, have already been starting to eat from this one. This whole area right here just loaded with the berries. All the way down.